this is a common sight in any town or city during the summer months. A group of youngsters playing cricket after school with a box for a wicket. This group is more fortunate than others because one of the world's greatest bowlers, Ray Lindwall, passes this street on his way home. And here comes Ray Lindwall right now. The sight of Ray Lindwall approaching makes the bowlers and batsmen strive harder than ever to show him what they can do. They are keen to attract his notice with a lusty shot or to knock over the wicket so they will win approval from the former champion. Lindwall can see and appreciate the latent talent in these lads. This is the same sort of back street in which he used to play himself as a boy and to bowl at his fastest when Bill O'Reilly was walking past each evening. Lindwall eventually played for O'Reilly's club, state and then for Australia against every cricket country in the world. Some of his duels with Len Hutton are listed in the history of cricket and when this pair began a test match there was a hush and then a roar and then a silence. Young Jeff is mad on cricket and practices every chance he gets as well as watching the game. A bat, a ball, and a boy's secret thoughts as he dreams of the day when he too might bowl for his country like Ray Lindwell, or perhaps be coached by Lindwell or some other great cricketers. Show me how you hold the ball for your outswinger, son. No, that's not quite right. I think it'd be better if you held the ball with the seam pointing towards the batsman and slightly towards slip and put your two fingers alongside the seam. Yes. That's much better. Just a minute, uh, here's Richie and a few of the boys. Richie, this is young Jeff I was telling you about. Hello, Jeff. Nice to meet you. Look, I wonder if you'd come over with me now. We'd like to show you a few of the batting fundamentals to start with. For all young cricketers, the fundamentals of stance and grip are most important. Get those right, and you've made the best possible start to the batting side of the game. The grip, hands close together. The stance, feet nicely spaced, not too close together, but perfectly balanced, and just that touch of determination that the bowler won't get you out. Now, come on, Jeff. Let's see if you've picked up these fundamentals. Let's see your stance and your grip there. No, no, now, come on. I told you before there, you've got to keep your feet parallel to the batting crease. That's the boy. And bring that bat in so it's behind your right toe. A little bit further. That's the boy. And your hands together. You've got your hands apart on the bat again. Together, that's right and just point your left elbow a little bit down to where the bowler is. That's very good. Now let's see how you go with this one, pitched outside the off stump, Jeff. Now, now, you've got to get your feet across. You'll see how the good players do it when they get their foot across to play a cut or a forcing shot off the back foot. And you've got to get yours right across so that you're right over the ball and your eyes are right behind it. Now this time, if the ball's up, Jeff, I'd like to see you play a drive. Here comes the bowler now. Well, now, again there, this is exactly the same, slightly in reverse with your feet. You didn't have your left foot across to the pitch of the ball. You had to play with the bat a long way away from the body. If the ball had done anything at all in the air or off the pitch, it would have come between bat and pad. Now, next time, you see that you get your foot right across and your head right over the ball. Well, now, you've got some problems there, Jeff. You're not, uh, not playing those shots very correctly at the moment. I'll tell you what we might do. We've got some great players here, Neil Harvey and Keith Miller. We're going to run through some of the shots. Let's go down and have a look at them, and then we'll come back to the nets later on, eh? Neil Harvey was one of the greatest batsmen ever to play the game. He played from 1947 to 1962, scoring 6,000 test runs for Australia, most of them in attacking manner. Here, he forces fast bowler Frank Tyson away through the covers in a typical piece of stroke play with feet perfectly positioned. One of Harvey's great strengths was his footwork, particularly against slow bowling. Now, the same basic rules apply to right and left handers, Jeff. Footwork's one of the most important of these. Let's have a look at Neil Harvey now and just watch how he dances down the pitch. Now, let's have a look at the same shot, this time in slow motion. Watch the feet. First the right, and then the left, up to it. And now, from side on, just the feet, taking him right out to where the ball pitches. 
That's the movement down the pitch to the slow bowler, but what of the faster bowler who doesn't allow for any of this and forces the batsman to play from the crease? See how the foot goes right to the spot where the ball lands, is placed alongside the ball, and the bat comes through close to the pad. Now then, let's see if you've got the hang of those two shots, Jeff. Jumping out to the slow bowler and driving. To break up a bowler's length, Harvey would force the ball through the mid-wicket. And though he is hitting across the ball, he's doing it with perfect safety. His square cut was a classic stroke well over the ball and played with a delightful roll of the wrists. Harvey was a batsman and brilliant fieldsman. Keith Miller was one of the greatest all-rounders ever to pick up a bat or ball playing for Australia from 1946 to 1956 as one of the electric personalities of the game. A fine batsman and fieldsman, he formed with Ray Lindwall one of the greatest fast bowling combinations in cricket history. It is as a batsman that we see him first, playing the same classic off-drive that here brings him four runs off Alec Bedsit. He is perfectly positioned for the front foot drive. and his feet take him to just the right place to force the ball away off the back foot in this second shot. But remember that attacking shots are based on defense. And see here how Miller plays his back defensive stroke back perfectly straight. Watch it closely, it's not hard to copy and it's most important. Now let's have a look at this back defensive shot in the same way as Miller played it. Jeff, let's see how you go with that. That's very good. Excellent. That's exactly what we want. Now we've got Bill Laurie and Bob Cowper and Peter Burge and Wally Grout to do some wicket keeping for us, Jeff. Let's have a look at them and see what they've got to show us. Victorian Bill Laurie has been a fine opening bat for Australia since 1961 taming men like Truman, Hall, Statham and Griffith. Here, in a test, he gets Statham away for valuable runs. An opening bat must have a sound defence, and having watched Miller off the back foot, let's see how Laurie plays forward defensively. See how the bat is kept close to the pad so the swinging ball can't get through? And the same applies to the off drive. But now let's see what happens when the opener plays too far away from his body. Enough defense for the moment. Once the opener has got a sight of the ball, he can open out in the same way as Laurie does here. Perfect footwork, getting him into position to play a full shot. Bob Cowper is also a left-hander, though entirely different in style, almost a gentle player. He is nevertheless a magnificent timer of the ball. Here he waits for the ball to come to him and cuts it away behind point, making sure that he is always well over the ball. Orthodox grip for a left-hander. But now that gap has been filled, so it's up to Cowper to place the ball into the gap left in front of point, placing the ball being all important. His drives are made with an ease that belies the timing that has gone into the stroke, feet beautifully positioned. And so he is here as he forces the slow bowler past mid-on. Delightful footwork, taking him to the ball. Remember always that footwork is one of your greatest assets. And when you get the ball through the field like Cowper and go for a quick two, slide your bat or you'll be out, run out.
Peter Burge, one of the finest Australian players in recent years, is a great driver of both back and front foot, and as well has perfected the sweep shot. It is not really a stroke recommended for young players. Better to wait until you are nearly as good as Peter Burge and are able to get the ball away behind square leg when the slow bowler strays towards leg stump or just outside it. Wicketkeeper Wally Grout is perfectly positioned as Burge sweeps. But now let's see something more orthodox, Burge's delightful footwork as he dances down the pitch to a slow bowler. It is essential to get right to the pitch of the ball when driving, and the only way to do that is with good, quick footwork. Now let's have a look at the basic fundamentals again, Jeff. We'll see just how much you've improved. Well, Richie, I don't think there's any doubt that this boy has improved a good deal. And I think you've got some first-class evidence there of the value of the right sort of coaching for a youngster. Is there any less emphasis on stroke play these days, Sir Donald? No, I don't really think there is, Richie. Um, you know, people exaggerate things, I feel, from one era to another. Uh, if you look back over the history of cricket, you'll find you've had great stroke players in previous generations, and you've also had a number of slow players. Well, I think you've still got the same thing today. I was reading an old book recently, and I noticed that Bill Woodfall, the Australian captain, who was a great player, uh, made a century in a match in England, and he only hit one four, and that was his last scoring shot. But this was not indicative of every innings that was played by everybody at the time. You've got to take into account, for instance, the field placing, the type of bowler, the type of wicket, and the conditions. But I think, by and large, if, if you can generalise, uh, we have players who attack the ball today just as much as we used to have. Did you enjoy your cricket, Sir Donald? <laughs> Did I enjoy it? <laughs> Richie, when I was a small boy, the week consisted of Saturday. The other six days were a fill-in to lead up till Saturday. I don't know that this is a good thing, actually, because boys have got to learn to uh, earn a living some other way besides playing sport, perhaps, but I really lived for Saturday. And I don't think that anyone can be a good cricketer if they don't enjoy their cricket. This is the whole basis of it. In fact, um, I can remember something that Neville Cardis once wrote about a player. He said if he won't hit the ball when he's got to a certain score, when will he hit it? Or in fact, why does he ever play the game at all? Now, I agree with this. I think it's quite right. And in fact, I think the best example we have of it is uh, in what the West Indian players do. They so obviously enjoy their cricket and they project their personalities on the field. I think this is what endears them to the public as much as their ability. I think it's basic to the whole thing. You've got to enjoy your cricket, and if you don't, what do you play it for? Is it true that uh, coaching methods have changed or improved over the years? What about when you were a lad? Did you have any actual straight-out coaching? Well, let's take the last part first, Richie. I had no coaching whatever when I was a boy. In fact, there was nobody to coach me. And um, I lived in a rather lonesome spot where I didn't have any boys to play with. So uh, my basic form of learning was to get out with a golf ball and throw it against the rail of a fence and let it come back to me and sort of follow its flight. And then I used to uh, play with a golf ball against an old tank stand and hit it when it came back with a cricket stump. Now, this was only just teaching my eye to follow the ball and get the, the hang of the whole business. It wasn't uh, coaching in the sense that you would understand it at all. I just never had any. And then when I ultimately got into first-class cricket. I still didn't have any coaching, but I tried to learn from the experience of watching other players and the experience of playing with better players. But I think in general, the coaching facilities available to boys today are much better than they ever were. There are more coaches, there are some good coaches, they devote more time to it, and you even have such a thing as the modern bowling machine, which must be a great asset to boys at the nets, because this machine can come and put the ball exactly where you want it to, ball after ball, so they can work on some particular aspect. 